Welcome to Amplify, the video series where we interview thought leaders about best practices, trends, and their experiences in creating engaging campaigns. Today, we have the great pleasure to speak with Thomas Bell. Thomas is the founder and CEO of the digital analytics agency, B3 Media Solutions. Welcome to Amplify, Thomas. It is awesome to have you here. It's awesome to be here. Thank you so much for having me. And um, yeah, it's very exciting to see you. Well, likewise, I've got so many questions for you. So I'm going to dive right in here. And um, I'm very curious about your company, um, B3 Media Solutions. You guys provide analytics and insights into a business's online performance, particularly social media. So can you talk Mm -hmm. a little bit more about that and talk about what that means for the clients that you work with on a practical level? Sure. Absolutely. Here at B3, we specialize in, in, in helping businesses understand their social media, their social media platforms, their online presence. Um, we do that by measuring and listening and analyzing over periods of time. It could be month over month, year over year. And we look at the uh, conversations and help them measure exactly what they're about and how on a practical level it can serve you is by understanding your customers better and understanding what they're talking about, you can increase engagement, awareness, more eyes on the brand, um, and that you know translates usually into increased sales if you can convert that. So they've got their messaging, you're looking at who's engaging with it, what's happening, and then fine-tuning that messaging. Is that kind of how it works? Absolutely. Well, we do a variety of things. Well, one of the things we do is, yes, we'll look at it, we'll see... Um, what they're talking about this month. Do we see if it needs um, response uh, immediately or if we have to make a change over time? We do crisis management. So sometimes right in real time, we'll be notified that something's being said in the community that can change per- a person's outlook on your brand. And we'll um, notify the customer and a client so they can um, you know, handle it or find out what's making the customer unhappy or happy and either increase or decrease their effort around that. So that's one of the more... Uh, instant things that we do. Now, over time, we also um, will look at how your advertising, your promotions, your uh, their influencers will do in a month's time, and we'll see how your return on the you know see what your return on investment of that is. We'll see how many people are, are, are really really responding to what you're putting out, and then that allows you to make more practical decisions in which directions you're going to go to in the future. Does that answer it pretty well for you? Yeah, you know, it really does. And I think a lot of times um, some business owners have the misperception that you just put stuff out there and that's it. You know, the the spaghetti on the wall theory. Yeah, that's usually when you're starting out and everybody's done it. You know, when you know in the beginning, yes, you know, we, we all were trying to figure it out. When TikTok came out, I was out there doing dancing and stuff, you know, as well as just like anybody else. But but the truth of the matter is um that is not nearly as effective as if you are gauging and measuring um your interactions with your clients, you'll be able to tell intuitively which things move them in one direction or another. And I and it, and it turns out to be very helpful. It's like marketing is so much, it's an art and a science, you know, and it's, I I feel like we're always adjusting, you know, a little bit and trying to get closer to that perfect um, messaging. And I don't know if we ever get there, but it's, it's like so important to look at all of that. And I want to ask you about artificial intelligence because you guys use AI and um, it's really interesting, all the things that we're learning that we can do with AI. Um, when did you first get interested in utilizing that? Well, as a company, we've been interested in it for close to seven years, but it was about four years ago that wow. we really started researching and developing um, uh, more ways of being able to use it. Now, uh, you know, AI is not quite evolved where we would hope it would be. At, well, no, that's not true. Um, it has evolved. It's not as quickly as people are hyping it up to be. Maybe that's a better way of putting that. So it is helpful and it is evolving, but it's not something that you can completely rely on. If you know how to prompt it correctly, if you can engineer um, what's going in correctly, what comes out the other end can greatly increase your efficiency and and, and increase how quickly 
you analyze things. It can, it can analyze large data sets very quickly. So, but it, but you got to understand that it it uh, it reacts very much off your prompts. At where it is today, and I'm talking about the best of them that I know of. But where where it is today, like ChatGPT, and I don't want to name a few, but you know there are a few out there. But if you don't prompt it correctly, you think of it more like. AI can perform in this business sort of like a, um, you know, the, the, when you're typing and it completes a sentence for you. It's more in that way than where we hope it to be one day. So it really is important who's behind the keyboard when you're talking to the AI. It's not, it is a, um, a prompt engineer is a specialized service. And it's something that um, I think is going to be increasingly important as AI is, devel is developed. And it does, I mean, quickly analyze data. It can spit out the right information if you ask the right question. Asking the right question is going to be key. And that's going to take some um, training for many companies. Yeah, so true. And I'm glad that you said that because I, I'm sure you get messages, I get messages. You can tell they're generated by AI. They're just a little bit weird. They're not quite right. And it feels kind of sleazy, you know, getting, you know, with, with companies just doing that and not having the human component. So I'm glad that you mentioned that you kind of need both still. That's what separates the amateurs from the professionals. They're, you're gonna be able, it's much more tailored. It, you know, when you're just trying it out and you're throwing everything out there and and you just, you, you know, you're not really, um, you're not really in the industry um, examining it from, from, a, from a viewpoint that we are. It can it can quickly look that way. What, what we're doing is we're making sure that we are making that it's not general knowledge. It can it could be glorified Google. I don't, it could be glorified Google if you if you don't if you don't know exactly how to do it. And also those responses that you get that are automated. There's also a piece of that too that you have to consider. That is kind of its intention. Um, there you know it's used to automate tasks and increase efficiency in a large number. So the payoff on that, I think, is what people are doing is they're doing so much of it because AI allows you to do bulk of it that the numbers alone of it kind of helps you whittle down to the people that you actually need. So you already assumed you're going to lose a bunch of those people. But the people that really, really need you um, can, can find you from the automations. But, you know, so I'm speaking on both sides of that. You, you know, while there is a market for it, I think there's a better market for if you do it well. And there's a better um, people like yourself and like myself appreciate it more with the human touch. It's like, I think when you're using like a chat bot, you, you understand you're talking to a chat bot and that's fine. Mm -hmm. It's when you get the cold emails from, from simply AI without the human touch that it gets a little mm -hmm. annoying, you know, it's yeah. just, it's, it's not quite there yet, but um, I, I, it can, make you tune out. it can make you tune out. Sorry to cut it, you it off. Can make you yeah, tune out. It can really make you tune out. Yeah, totally. But you know, it's like that said, the companies that are gonna like not use it at all are gonna get left behind. So what yeah. are your thoughts? You know, so you know, like we all have to embrace it. It's kind of like uh years ago, if if somebody was like, Oh, I'm not gonna have email, that's horrible. You know, obviously you're gonna have to evolve and have email. Um, at least currently, I don't know, maybe there'll be something else someday. But um, with AI, we're, we're all going to have to learn how to incorporate it into our businesses at some point in some way. So do you have any thoughts about how companies could maybe prepare or think about beginning to incorporate it in a smart way into their marketing um, even well, now? I'm going to explain. I'm going to speak from my experience a little bit and how I'm trying to approach the problem. Um, one is you want to start, you know, immediately they should start training people or a, a few key people, drivers that are motivated mm -hmm. inside the company to um, be drivers of this in the company and to um, and help the company become acquainted with it. Because like I said, the prompt engineering is going to be very, very important. And uh, um, programming, this programming and understanding how to program and and, and I think companies should start training for that. I think it's one of the most, um, it's our, our lowest resource these days. Our lowest thing right now is programmers that will be able to handle all the AI that's coming our way because everything's going to 
going to be programmed. Everything we're using now is almost your car, my car. I mean, um, without programs, we, we are not going to be able to do very much. So I think companies investing in and in, in understanding how to program, prompt engineer, and um, work with this AI is going to be super important. And what we're doing is we're constantly dabbling with it. Now, what I think is going to be, can be an issue is that if you're doing it and it's free and you're on a public resource, you're, to, to dabble there and to learn there can be dangerous because there's nothing that's going to be yours. So I think that when you're using shared information and you have proprietary information in your company, that's always a danger. So right now, I think companies are going to be skeptical. I know I am about training my, my, my company and putting my information into the, the most advanced ones that I know of are shared. So it's a delicate it's a delicate line to walk. You do want to stay on top of it. I do encourage experimentation and training. Um, I prefer to pay for it than use a shared uh, use a um, a shared platform, um, just because I'll be able to control my information as opposed to get having to sign away, letting everyone use it and anyone being able to look at it. I think that's going to be a challenge for companies because they're not going to want to do that. I don't think. So companies that, that is such a good point. It, <clears throat> they can yeah, the there's a. Uh, um, so I host a networking group and bring in speakers. We mm -hmm. often speak about cybersecurity, and that's mm -hmm. one of the things that comes up all the time is when you're using a free app, you're putting yourself in such a vulnerable position, you know, for so mm -hmm. many reasons. Yeah, do you really you know. own it? Do you really own it? I mean, right. and if you see it pop up somewhere else <clears throat> in a similar fashion, did you give them the right to allow AI to regenerate? Uh, a version of your idea, but just with a few different nuances that are being adjusted because prompt engineers can do that. I can, I can pull, you can pull other people's things and just change a few nuances and try to adapt it and then run it through another program to make it unrecognizable. All those things are, are, are capabilities that are coming into play. And, um, and um, I think that company should be very aware of and also should also be very aware of the um, counter software to be able to recognize it identify it and making sure it's not infiltrating your company and none of your information is getting out there. You want to be in safe hands. I recommend someone in between that can understand and work as your firewall. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. So, um, you know, whatever technology you use, and I, I think it's really exciting to imagine what's going to be possible, what's already possible and figuring that all out. It's a big puzzle. Um, but whatever technology you use, you've got to understand your audience. You've got to understand the people you're talking to. And, um, you know, like we kind of touched upon that with people who, you know, throw the spaghetti at the wall and, and um, you know, don't take the time to listen. But when you do take the time to listen and really get it, how can that help a company really, you know, grow in advance? What, what, are, what do you have to say about understanding your online audience? You know, engaging, engagement, um, understanding what's important to them and constantly being able to bounce back and forth, providing great content, great visual content, video content is super, super important. I mean, way up at the top of, 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 of getting your brand note recognized and getting eyeballs. Eyeballs are ultimately what's important in this brand. And then when you get the eyeballs, being able to keep them there with good and authentic, original material that is engaging, that is not um, gratuitous or just or just trying to sell them things. People want to be educated. They want to find value. And if your brand provides that, they'll be your friend. And they'll come back to you every time. People are loyal when they get good information. The genuine, organic, authentic, authentic engagement. Is really is really the key, and part of that is listening to them, understanding what's important to them, making content that's going to speak to them, and um, and 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 tell them a little bit about who you are, shared values, understanding their values, and sharing those values, and working with your and working with your uh, clients and fans. I think it was super important. Yeah, and you know the brands that do that really well, they are not at least the ones I admire, they're not afraid to believe in something. They understand not everybody is their audience. You know, they, they can come across with that authenticity and just mm -hmm. believe that they're going to attract the right people. And Absolutely. I think that's really interesting. Yeah. It's, it's a good way to do business. It's a good way to just, you know, market yourself in a yeah. way that's true to your essence, you know? 
Yeah, shared values and, and organically um, speaking to your customer from that. I mean, right now with all the inauthentic things going on and, and, and throughout the world, people really appreciate goodness. I find the goodness in people are still there and they're looking for more goodness out there, less upset. And, you know, um, I think that if your brand is showing that, educating, encouraging that, encouraging your values, um, the people that share it with you can find you. And then once they find you, man, just this, you know, and, and being just real with them and organic with them has been really effective. Yeah. So entertaining too. Funny is always going to pay off. You know, if you can have a good sense of humor and, twine this, and some irony intertwined in your content, uh, it always seems to pay off from the numbers and data I'm looking at. Yeah, for sure. And, and so you mentioned video, so we have to go back to that topic. Um, why do you think that's such a powerful medium that people respond so well to? What is it about video? Pictures, uh, you know, they say a thousand words. Video is like millions. I mean, it really can quickly translate in very short time who you are, what you're about. It allows people to thin slice who they're dealing with very quickly. Um, and in the digital age, it's the way to quickly translate the most information truthfully and what people kind of believe in. If you, I, mean, I see a picture of it, I know it can be played with. It's much easier to believe, and I can see your lips moving and I'm hearing it come out your mouth, read my lips. It's much easier to you know, know that I can then slice whether I believe in this person, what their values are. And then as far as video around your product, Properly presenting your product, I mean, it's an absolutely wonderful way to get all aspects of it. I mean, we can get nearly everything with smell in there and taste, right? <laughs> when it comes to video, you know, you can use lighting. Um, there's so many different aspects visually that speak to human beings, and it's a great influencer. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously it's an art form, but it's I get really excited when the marriage comes of art and science as it relates to video, because, you know, there's the science of the strategy and understanding the audience and all of that. And then the art, of how do you make that message come alive? And right. it you know, gets fun. Yeah, it does. It does. It does get fun there. It helps you increase your rankings and your search engine optimization stuff too for your website in practical sense. Yeah. And, you know, and also, and it helps the company um, share all updates and things that are in, in, in an interesting fashion. And I love hearing the stories. Um, can you, is there anything you can share about some of the ways maybe you've seen your clients or others using video in an interesting way that's Absolutely. getting good results? Anecdotes have been a very um, great way that people like to engage with. I think that, you know, short stories that are related to your own life that, that teach lessons and uplift spirits, you know, that show, um, you know, elements of, of being of humanity and being human, perseverance and uplift, scholarship, things of those, things of those nature, you know, in your in your content is it's usually you can show that that's very engaging. And also, um, I think that knowledge using video for knowledge and insights you know teaching people things they seem to be very drawn to understanding and learning and doing their own research and now if you are educational and you are a thought leader in any area you know you can help them do that research by providing them with valuable insights and and citing proper facts that you've gathered and then you become a thought leader and people can also research you and your brand around whatever around whatever material that you presented to them that you believe in. That's huge. And and I love when I, I love it when our clients want to go down that road because it's an opportunity for them to be authentic, for them to show their authority. And the whole thing with marketing is, you know, to stay top of mind and be remembered and thought of um, when somebody needs your services. You know, a lot of our clients uh, like a lawyer, you wouldn't necessarily need them today, but you want to think of them three months from now when you might need them. And, so. and quite honestly, speaking again to, well, two things, one, the thin slicing and two, the educational portion of it is very rare that I make any investment these days without some kind of video input that I've researched. Very few things I will purchase without seeing some sort of video content that explains to me who I'm dealing with, what I'm dealing with, whether it be from the party itself, or whether I do it from an outside source, a third party source, 
there's some sort of video content that comes into play that educates me before I buy anything these days. I, you know, I don't know if everybody's working from that. I am seeing a lot of promising data around that seems like that's what everyone else is doing as well. But from my own viewpoint, from the viewpoint of people in my peripheral, um, um, that is almost always the case whenever I'm making decisions around my money. Because seeing is and believing, brand, right? And around my brand, seeing is believing. Seeing yeah. is believing. I yeah, mean, and even a- in, it makes me think of um, video testimonials too. You know, when you when you see somebody that's experienced um, a brand or a product and they're talking about it, that means something because, you know, there's some kind of believability there as long right. as they're speaking authentically, right? And, and then not only do they are the purchasers, they become advocates, you know, and, and yeah. you're doing it in the best way possible. You don't you didn't pay somebody to tell someone else that your product is good. I know when my friend tells me, hey, man, you got to get this thing. I used it myself. Oh, that thing you're using right there or, or, or what you're witnessing right here or what you're liking right now, you know, that's from... That's, I always look for a referral, even like, like even they'll go referral first, then video. Yeah. And, and what happens is that brand advocate is, is monumental and you're creating brand advocates every time that you engage with them in a positive way, solve a problem, teach them something, give them something back of value, um, going an extra mile or just, you know, treat them like a human yeah. being and responding to them in real time, as opposed to, I got the money. Thank you guys very much. You know, I think that is loyalty is built upon those type of things and 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 that will improve your branding for ministry. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. What do you think? Um, and this I don't know if you can answer this question or not, but as far as um and the reason you may have a difficulty answering it is because it's a little bit general, but I'm wondering if you have a favorite social media platform when your clients are looking to, um, you know, promote their product and it probably depends, but um, I'd love to hear you. Th- okay. Well, you answer that question first and then I have a follow-up question. That's funny. Um, wow. It, it, all right. It's a big I'm question. Say, you, you, might, you know, you, you psychic, you, you can really see the future because I am going to say it depends. <laughs> well it does it, that makes sense the thing is, my personal favorite is because of the amount of engagement friendships that i can get through that i get through it would you know that would be something in the lines of facebook because you know there i i don't i you know i prefer to have my personal more personal relationships there um instagram if i do see products and i see branding there that i that that you know if my other friends and people that are engaged with or interested in speak to me um as enjoy as far as seeing exciting things or just seeing like the news instagram would be in yeah as far as business when i say news i'm not talking about real news when i say instagram i'm talking about uh, i don't want to say that's the word for it sensational sensational yeah. stuff i'm looking yeah. for something sensational and and i want to be entertained i go to instagram um tiktok this entertainment with branding under undertone. Um, now, if I'm my favorite one, I, it was totally unresourced for many, many years that have stepped into the limelight. And I think it's going to become a big, big uh, thing in the future. It's going to move. It's going to it's going to move the needle. It's going to it's LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Right. I, I, I missed the boat on it for many years. I called myself being in social media and I ignored it. LinkedIn was the last one that I really, really got into, but there's no more, there's no quicker way to get to a guaranteed source that can be segmented demographically by many, many different ways. You can segment it and you can speak to that community and every, almost every single company has somebody connected in it with at least one to five pivotal employees at enterprise level, there's somehow somebody there connected to LinkedIn. There's no single place on social media that I know of that has more connections that I can resource. Now, how well you do that, and that goes to how well your um, team is, how well you know uh, your team is. That comes down to your team. Many people are missing the boat on LinkedIn. Yeah. And it's <clears throat> I read a statistic that only about a third of the people on LinkedIn are using video, for example, 
Um, yeah, so yeah, A, yeah. they're not using LinkedIn or they're not using video. It's a <laughs> big opportunity. They're about to, yeah, but I, yeah. you know, I've changed my strategy around what I learned in the last, I spent about a year studying LinkedIn, the responses, the data. I've spent a year charting, charting, not just, you know, randomly doing, I've been charting the success of it and watching the growth. Yeah, nothing else kind of touches it. I think people are missing it. And I think by increasing video on LinkedIn, it's going to set your, your company apart from other companies tremendously, which is one of the reasons why I know I, I found your company. I was, I just, I, I saw what you were doing in video and I thought it was fantastic. So, and it's very wow. interesting. So that's the reason why I'm here today. <laughs> well, hopefully we'll get to do some stuff together. Um, that would be I pray. I hope, I hope. So um, just before we move on to a different topic, um, that $44 billion company, is that one like dead? Do you think that? <laughs> That's my least favorite one, I have to say. You know, I'm going to tell you, I think it's, uh, um, I think that it's going to end up doing surprisingly uh, okay, um, Mm. considering I think this is, A, America's a sensational place. And the guy that's running it is a sensational guy with many things in the, you know, with many irons in in the fire. It's it's hard to see him failing. I think he has um, each thing in its place and it's designed to be there for a reason. I don't think it's an accident. That's what I can say. I don't think what's going on is an accident. Right. So I think that um, this is on purpose and it's, they'll do as well as TMZ or any other um, place of that nature. Right. Well, it'll be interesting to watch for sure. And they're very <laughs> well connected and, and that platform is connected to everyone, even more so than the LinkedIn that I mentioned to you. Even more so, even more people connected, but it's how serious they take the engagement. So posturing is really where they're having their problem right now. Their posturing is not really where they want it to be, and their brand image is definitely uh, needing some work. So, yeah, but I've been talking to them. They might get my help. So, you know, maybe. Oh, okay. (laughs) Okay. Just just make sure you get paid. Yeah, right. I know. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, what, no, what do you think? Happened. I'm just, I'm, I'm Josh. <laughs> with, um, with all these platforms, you know, there's so much um, content, you know, there's so much noise. Do you have any tips for somebody that's, um, you know, people are scrolling. So if a, a, one of your clients or, you know, anybody wants to create content that's thumb stopping, that makes you pause. Uh, do you have any tips for, you um, creating content that uh, no, I don't, gains your interest? You know, I, I'm not sure that I have almost any, it, you never know what's going to pop. It's, yeah. it's insane. The silliest the thing, you're like, really? Why is that happening? And you're, you're like, what? and then the stuff that you think is going to just kill the whole landscape is just cricket. Right. But, you know, what I can tell you that is effective, so I don't know what's going to hit. But I can tell you what's effective is if you are putting video up, it really doesn't hurt to put some writing on it so that if they can't turn their sound up in the environment, they can still get your message. That's a big clue that I want to make sure everybody understands that your message. I look at a lot of things. I, I really wish I could turn the sound up, but I can't. But if I can listen, if I, if I read yeah. what's going on in there, I'm still getting a message. I'm going to watch the whole video. I'm going to watch the whole video if I can do it without disturbing my people around me. Um, there's a, yeah. there's a, I think that's a little, that's, that's something you could use. Yeah. hundred percent. Totally, totally agree with you. Yeah. What, so, you know, you're a smart guy, you've got, you know, great clients, you're doing really interesting work. What mm-hmm. on your website, you talk about online community management. Can you talk a little bit like what services you guys offer and how you manage these? Like, what does that mean? How do you manage these communities? Well, the person that has that, has that right now for me is uh Barika, my, my 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 partner. She would be much better suited to um to um, handle that question than I would follow up interview. <laughs> but but no 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 I do understand that you know that we're a, we, that she's a, able to do any of the functions across the community and our team has been able to do any of the functions which is as far as community management goes is making sure there's no real no crisis going on, no urgencies, no nothing that egregiously that you've done wrong. If you've overlooked something, being able to recognize that 
and uh, and own own up to its speed response speed. If I had to say, it was one thing that community management needs most is um, response speed. I've never seen anyone not respond to a quick response and be grateful for it. Well, I can't say not seen anyone, but um, mm -hmm. very infrequently do I see that. And um, just response time seems to be important with the clients, and um, and being able to have the knowledge of what how to respond without further aggravating the situation. Um, while honoring how the person feels. That's a big part of community engagement. Then the second part is creating content that's not insulting to your to your fan base, creating content that speaks to their intelligence, keeps them laughing, engaged, or or, or wanting to make feeling as if that you're really, really having a um, conversation with them. The one thing that people don't like is being duped. Like, like mm -hmm. you, you're leading them this way, and really, whatever's happening isn't authentic or real. Or if it's not authentic or real, at least own up to that and say, hey, we thought this was nice. But, but don't ever um, be inauthentic in your work because it's going to damage your reputation. It's going to damage how people see your brand. They're not going to trust anything you say. Because they're being, a lot of times, whether they are right or wrong is debatable. But one thing is they're, you know, they're, they're, they're honestly they feel like they can put their feelings out on social media. People seem like they're able to speak up way more than they can in any other place. That's mm -hmm. a great place to listen. It's unsolicited. It's, you know, people aren't paying, paying them to say it. They're just saying it. And they're telling you what's on their mind. Sometimes it's more influenced than others, depending on how they want to be seen. But, you know, I think that um, it's, it's just a great opportunity for us to, to work with clients and, uh, and um, be able to influence um, how they see us. I love everything you just said. And um, I just want to comment on the response part of that because sometimes you you hear people say they're nervous about putting out content because they're going to mm -hmm. get some negative response or whatever. And it's going to happen. You know, it's going to yeah. happen. Some, But as long as you respond to that in a timely manner, in a respectful way, or, you know, whatever your strategy is, I feel like you can use it to your advantage too. I, I I believe so too. There's only there's only some circumstances that I that I would say you shouldn't respond to things um, when they're being um, lewd and suggestive. Mm, if they're yeah. looking pornographic, anything that involves hate speech, um, and any any um, pejorative type conversation where you're where you're um, putting people down, things like that. Sometimes that's just a block. You don't yeah. want to. I, I don't. I, I. I see most brands don't want to have that kind of conversation on their page, and I'm not quite sure it is the type of conversation that should be on pages if that isn't your business. If you're not in the business of whatever it is they're discussing, um, if it's insulting, egregious, lewd, suggestive, um, uh, um, you know, unbecoming. Yeah, those you, need to be deleted. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> if it's about your product, yeah. it's about your service. It's if it's about something that you can have an effect over. But you know, I'll sit out things that are um, that um, yeah, I think that are not really related to what I do, and that are just not um, reasonable requests of engagement. Yeah, no, that's, that's a really good. That point. line is is important for each brand. Every brand has a different risk tolerance, and every brand has a different um, tone and and way that they interact. So I can't speak to every brand, but that's how we do it here. Yeah, no, that makes sense. But even in response, maybe that's deleting the comment. You know, maybe it's it's just like staying yeah, on top of what's the happening. The best thing to do, yeah. To leave a comment, don't even take nothing. They think that they insulted everybody and got something in there, and then they'll just go away to the next person they want to pick on, and then you can keep moving forward. Now, if it's directly yeah, related like, to your uh, brand performance or product, you have to speak to it um, in some regard. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, especially if there's any credibility ability to it. Absolutely. So um, I just have a couple more questions for you um, and okay. we can wrap up here. This has been awesome. Is there a strategy? Awesome. Can you think of something that you guys have done for yourselves? You know, I, I know a lot of times people that work in this space, it's like the cobbler's children have no shoes. Speaking for myself, you know, sometimes we get really busy and we can't make our own videos. Um, I'm, I'm sure that's not the case for you, but is there like something you've done with your own marketing that has been really successful to, you know, build your own company? I think research 
and 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 development is so important inside of a company. Continuous learning, continually learning and understanding your product better. Q and A and trying to be ahead of emerging trends and technologies. Mm. We spend a lot of time trying to see what's coming down the line because we want to be intuitive and we want to be predictive. And so to do those type of things, you gotta really stay ahead of the curve. So I'm up early in the morning listening to the latest developments, trying to understand what I can learn as quickly as I can learn it. I think that would, you know, that's kind of what I've implemented the most here. And um, that's what helps serve us the best. There's no magic sauce. I think that just staying on it, don't not being lazy about it. It's a daily thing. Technology is moving at a pace that's, you know, in, in history, there's, there's nothing like it. It's, it's, it's amazing how blistering fast it's going. And you'll be out and, <laughs> And I'm trying to put myself out of business before anybody else can. And that's how, and that can happen really fast, especially with new AI and things of that nature. So please let's pay attention and, yeah. um, and, and let's, and let's focus on and what makes us happy and, and step out there and, and keep learning. Education is key in this technological, in, in this te- that technological world we're in and on these platforms. They're changing and evolving every day. Yeah, hundred um, percent, absolutely. Yeah. Is is there um, so just to wrap up? Is there anything you wish I would have asked you that I didn't ask you that you want to talk about? Uh, when I'm going to visit the office and hang out and with you guys and say hello, and, and, yeah. and, and then we're going to go out for a dinner. I can't wait to come see you. That's you amazing. Talk, talk, talk online, so I can't wait to get out there and meet the whole team and hang out. Uh, you guys have been a wonderful wonderful team to work with and and your company's top notch a-listers and i i gotta say i work with you know I, I work in television so i work with various various um production companies over 20 years and i gotta say you guys have been one of the best experiences that i've had and the kindest people that i've been able to work with and i said thank you and i hope that oh. i get to see you personally well, well that's very kind of you to say and yeah. um i you know whether you get out here first or i get out there you know I'll gladly go buy you a, you know, no, burger or something. <laughs> it's on me. Dinner's on me when you guys come. I can't wait to see you. All right? That sounds thank amazing. Thank you guys so much for having me. I, I'm just, uh, thank you so much. I'm so, yeah. so blessed that you guys. Thank you for being me. our guest. This is really great. Thank you. All right. Fantastic. Well, thank okay. you. Okay.